After watching this video, you will be able to Name desirable performance criteria for a grounded force feedback haptic device Describe the relationship among key device attributes and its performance And compare and contrast the attributes of a device In the previous chapter, you learned about six key attributes of GFF devices these attributes are not independent. They interact with each other and influence device performance in complex ways. Let's first take a look at the criteria of a good GFF device. In 1994, Mazzi and Salisbury proposed three important criteria for evaluating force feedback devices. Number one, free space must feel free, which means you should not feel the haptic device while moving in an empty virtual space. This means that the weight, friction, and inertia from the device should be as close to zero as possible. These devices are described as having a high transparency, meaning that you can feel the virtual environment and not the device itself. Number two, solid virtual objects must feel stiff. This criterion is about the maximum stiffness that the device can render when a user is touching a virtual wall or a rigid virtual object. Haptic research suggests that a stiffness of at least 20 newton per centimeter is required for a virtual surface to be perceived as a solid wall, and higher values of 100 newton per centimeter improve perception of an immovable wall. Number three, virtual constraints must not be easily saturated. This means that the maximum force output of the device must be high, so that the users cannot overcome it during their interactions with rigid virtual objects. In practice, there are several other criteria for evaluating and selecting a GFF device for an application. Some of these include Ergonomic motion. Larger workspace and higher degrees of freedom can improve user comfort and dexterity in the virtual environment. Precise input and output. Higher resolution of position and force sensing and output also improves user experience and can be crucial in certain applications such as surgery. Other factors such as device cost, ease of building, programming, modifying, and maintaining the device can also play an important role in selecting the device for its use case. Note that in practice, these performance criteria are not strict rules, and the desirable performance criteria can also depend on the application. For example, the previous performance criteria is true for teleoperation and virtual applications. But for specific medical applications, having high stiffness and force output is not the desirable criteria and instead the device should be flexible and soft. Let's take a look at the general trends in the relationship among key device attributes and the desirable performance criteria. How a user holds onto the device impacts the practical range of motion of the device for the user. The device with a pinch grasp and defector allows for individual finger movements. Stylus-based devices allow for precise wrist motion and provide rotational workspace. In contrast, the majority of power-grasped and defectors only provide translational workspaces, and they commonly require arm or whole body motion. Interestingly, the end effector for some haptic devices can be customized to constrain or increase the range of user motion as needed. The end effector itself can also increase the degrees of freedom for a device. For example, the power grasp end effector for Omega-3 allows 3 degrees of freedom. The stylus-based end effector for Omega-6 adds 3 additional rotational doffs. And finally, Omega-7 has an additional grasping doff in the end effector, leading to 7 independent doffs. The motion range and force output capabilities of devices are also related. This plot shows the device force versus workspace for a number of haptic devices. See if you can identify any of these devices. Here, a similar plot is divided into a set of categories that highlight the intended use cases for devices. You can see that the majority of haptic devices for desktop and precision applications have relatively small force and workspace. In contrast, wearable devices provide a larger workspace. And finally, exoskeletons and teleoperation devices provide higher force and a wide range of workspace sizes. Similarly, Haptopedia visualizes workspaces of over 100 GFF devices versus their force output in the Device Output tab. The first plot shows the relationship between translational device workspaces and their force output. The second plot shows their rotational workspace versus torque output, which is the rotational equivalent of force. Take some time to check out these plots. 
While the force and torque output of a device is an important attribute that is often reported, the values may not fairly represent the capabilities of the device. In fact, a device can provide high peak force if it uses a stronger motor or an electrical amplifier. As you can see here, two versions of Phantom Premium provide a very different force output, despite having the same mechanical structure. Let's take a look at how the mechanical structure of a device can impact its other attributes. In general, serial linkage devices can provide larger motion range than parallel devices, as one can make the links long or chain up multiple links in a series. In turn, the position resolution and firmness of the device links can be lower in a serial device. In parallel devices, the workspace is confined by multiple device links, which allow for accurate position measurement and control and increased physical support and force output. Devices with a mix of serial and parallel links make a trade-off between the two previous categories. Depending on their design, the device attributes could be similar to serial or parallel structures. In this case, phantom devices are similar to a serial device, with improved resolution and output. Note that these mechanical structures have their strengths and weaknesses, and the best structure often depends on the intended application. Here is a plot of the number of links versus mechanical structure for over 100 Haptopedia devices. You may have noticed that the devices in all categories can have a wide number of links, but overall serial devices tend to have fewer links than parallel and serial parallel devices. Devices with uncommon engineering features can offer specific performance trade-offs. For example, magnetic levitation devices can provide high force output and resolution. They also have high transparency, and they can provide no friction in free virtual space. However, they often have small workspaces. Brake-actuated devices are safe, but they can also be harder to control than devices with electric motors. Devices with steering wheels are safe, and can provide a large workspace, but they are complex to build and cannot provide a high force output. Finally, admittance type devices can provide high stiffness, but they tend to be more expensive. As you saw in the previous chapter, many of these device attributes contribute to the complexity of building a device. Besides these attributes, the electronic components including the sensors and actuators, as well as the materials used in the mechanical links and joints also play an important part in the quality of a haptic device. Designing a device that is sturdy and robust, has a high position and force sensing resolution and output, and provides little inertia and friction can be very challenging. DIY designers often prioritize the ease of fabrication and customization over some of these performance marks. Let's finally compare the attributes of two example devices, focusing on the six key attributes of Phantom Premium 1.5 and Omega 3. Phantom Premium uses a stylus end effector that allows for precise wrist and arm motions, whereas Omega 3 has a round handle for power grasping that requires arm motion. Phantom Premium provides three translational as well as three rotational degrees of freedom. Omega 3 provides three translational degrees of freedom. Phantom Premium has a medium workspace of 38 by 26 by 19 centimeters, and Omega 3 provides a small workspace of 16 by 16 by 11 centimeters. Phantom Premium uses a mix serial and parallel mechanical structure, and Omega 3 has a parallel structure. Phantom Premium provides 8.5 newtons, and Omega 3 provides 12 newtons peak force output. They are also complex to build and require excellent engineering, which makes them difficult to reproduce from scratch in a research lab. Both devices are commercial and can be used for a wide range of applications. They both provide a high-quality haptic output. In this video, you learned about some desirable performance criteria for GFF devices, the relationship between device attributes and performance, and device comparisons. In the assignments, you will be asked to Explore the Device Output tab on Haptopedia and answer a set of questions. Describe which mechanical structures can provide a high force output, and compare and contrast attributes of a few GFF devices. Check out the course website for more details about the assignments.